Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live production here, sponsored by Scripps Sports or produced by Scripps Sports Weather. Hope you all had a great Christmas and are enjoying the holidays with family and loved ones. Tom Wiley here. Uh, we are 12 days away from the FCS National Championship game in, in Frisco, Texas, featuring your Montana State Grizzlies and the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Now, MTN Sports will be along for the ride as Montana makes its first trip to, to uh, the FCS title game since 2009. And this year's coverage will include a couple conversations on Facebook Live with a few Montana Grizzly football legends. And we thought there's no better way to start with a pair of former Hall of Fame quarterbacks who are really synonymous with Grizzly football success and postseason success. Of course, if you watched any Grizzly football broadcasts on MTN this year, you've seen head coach Marty Mordenweg. He always brings the juice. Thanks for joining us, Marty. And of course, the current head coach of the Calgary uh, Stampeders of the Canadian Football League, Mr. Duper Dave Dickinson, Montana's legend of the fall. We'll, we'll start with a little Christmas question since we're waiting for a couple folks to join on here. Marty, what is the best gift you got this year or the most unique gift? I will tell you, I had the opportunity to get all four kids at home with my wife, Lindsay. Dave, you know my wife. Dave, by the way, Merry Christmas. It is so good to see you again. But anyway, Tom, that, that's my favorite thing to do is get the family together. And man alive, had we had a, we've had a great time. And one of them leaves as early as tomorrow, and then they start filtering out. So Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Dave, it's great to see you. Tom, appreciate you having us on. As always, appreciate you guys joining us. Dave, how about yourself north of the border? How was uh, your Christmas spent, and what was the greatest thing you got? Uh, my wife and I, were adults. So if we want something, we buy it. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't wait for Christmas to get gifts, but... Uh... She upgraded my wardrobe, uh, which was nice of her. And then, uh, you know, my kids are 18 and 16 now. And, uh, you know, like Marty's saying, they, they're kind of cool, you know. And uh, I really felt like they enjoyed Christmas just hanging out. And listen, we're a football family, so uh, there's a lot of football watched. Um, I'm supposed to say I got knocked out of my fantasy football playoffs pool this Christmas, which I did, um, by a bunch of Missoula guys and Great Falls guys. So, wasn't uh, wasn't a Merry Christmas in fantasy football, but overall, like Marty says, just love being around the family, small family. My brother was here and I was able to see my in-laws and, and uh, still a really good time. Certainly uh, images of Frisco dancing in Grizz fans' heads over the holidays. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to get out of the way here because I think our time would be better spent listening to the two of you guys. But, um, Dave, I'll, I'll start with one question just to get things fired off for you. You know, I've talked to you enough over the years to know that even when you're in the busiest of seasons in the CFL, you always kind of got one eye towards the Grizzlies in Missoula. Uh, what is your reaction to, to what the Grizz have done this year to make it to the championship game and, um, you know, go to Frisco after a roller coaster of a season? Well, on about roller coaster, I mean, these guys have been really, uh, in my opinion, I kind of sense they're getting better. So up in Canada, you know, we have a thing called TSN, the Sporting Network. It's kind of like our ESPN and uh idaho grizz game came on nationally televised game up here is pretty cool uh that was the first chance i got to sit down and watch an entire game and uh loved what i saw um you know i remember some pretty good memories going to the the kibbe dome i believe and and have some pretty good games with a guy named doug nussmeyer uh <laughs> yo murphy some really good some really good players back in our day uh, and beating them and the Grizz went in there that was a that was a nail biter that was a nail biter it really came down to that last little bit and I'd, I'd kind of been tracking Idaho's quarterback a little bit he's big sky freshman of the year and thought he might accidentally end up up here and then all, what I saw was a, a young quarterback from Montana doing some great things I guess he's a senior but uh you know first year guy and really liked the way that was, the game was called it was quite aggressive early on taking their shots and then settled in and, and just kind of bled the clock but I felt like they're getting better. So the whole point of the, for the Grizz is if you're going to win a championship, you got to get better each and every week. You know, you want to be playing your best football as the year goes on. And uh, that 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 win over Sac State was very impressive. And then to to demolish the Cats like they did, I did not see that coming. And, uh, you know, they're playing really good football. So I'm not necessarily surprised. Um, South Dakota State is, is an amazing team. Uh, but I'm not really that surprised because the Grizz have been getting better and they've shown people who they are. Dave, you, you made a good point. Uh, it looked to me like the Grizz early in the season were winning games, 
but they were sort of playing down to the level of team they were playing. And then they laid a big egg up in Flagstaff at NAU. It was just one of those games that everything went the wrong way. And then they won a couple of closer type games in that Idaho game. They went into Moscow and beat them in a tough, physical, close game. And they got better and better from there. And Dave, as a coach, you want your team to be playing your best football down the stretch and into the playoffs, through the playoffs. Do you as a coach do anything special during the year to allow that type of strategy to happen up there in the Canadian Football League? Well, we're lucky. Like six of our nine teams make the playoffs. So you're actually not playing very well if you don't make the playoffs. I mean, we barely got in this year, but we got in. The main thing you're thinking is health, okay? So you're trying to make sure your best guys are healthy. And you know Marty as well as I do. I mean, what is it, the 15th game, 16th game maybe? You're you're not going to be healthy. I remember going in in my year, 95, I had a bad shoulder, throwing shoulder. And I was taking all some voodoo medicines and trying to keep it going. I just, just got hit that week before, and it was not feeling good all week. So you want you want your guys feeling fairly healthy. And other than that, you just want them to uh, – so I like to honestly feel like you're a little bit of an underdog. So they've got that going for them as well. I like being an underdog going into a championship game. I'd rather not be the favorite. And uh, and then from that point on, I, I do think CFL-wise, can you handle the big moment? Can you handle the big stage? And are your playmakers, your best players going to make the plays? Because that's what it'll come down to is your best players got to play well. And uh, for the Grizz, though, in the past, I'm with you. You know, if you have if you have your injury bug or you hit your lull at the wrong time, it it can definitely dent your confidence and put you out of this playoff run. But these guys have been rolling. And like I said, that cat game, that was that was something else. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw that coming. I didn't. In fact, I, I had all of my little wagers go on. Hey. What do you mean? You saw that coming? I, <laughs> I, I, get, I get to announce the seven conference games, so I sort of saw that progression. And here's the other thing, Dave. Maybe a little bit different from when – Certainly I played, and maybe even you played. The home field advantage for the Brawl of the Wild is huge in the past, let's say, half a decade. The, the Bobcats have won uh, uh, by many points there, and the Grizzlies in Missoula have won by many points. You know, need, n- none of the games have been even close. And so that home field advantage may be – a little bit bigger advantage than it once was. Dave, let's go back to 1995. That game against Marshall, and it just so happened to be at their home field, correct? And yeah, the last correct. drive, Dave, you guys, you, you guys are down by a point, and you're backed up just a little bit. You had to make a, 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 a heck of a, a end-of-game drive to kick – the game went in field goal with just a few seconds left on the clock. Take us through what you remember about that championship drive. Well, I remember getting, I don't know if I should say it, my ass whipped. I remember, uh, I remember, I think I got sacked 10, 11, 12 times. We struggled on artificial turf. We had a bunch of guys that, you know, we were tough and strong. Were we the quickest feet? Uh, not too sure about that, but, uh, you know, we threw basically every play. So uh, I just remember getting hit a lot. They had some NFL quality, quality guys in their D-line. I had a guy named Billy Lyon that uh, ended up playing with the Packers. You might have been there, uh, Marty, when he was there. But um, had him, and he got hurt. So that was nice. <laughs> and then, you know, for me, to be honest, I just really enjoyed uh, uh, the challenge of trying to beat someone on their home field. They had 34,000 people, 35,000 there uh at the game well we had about 2500 of them but they had the other 32,000 so i just enjoyed trying to win in that sort of environment and yeah it came down there's a fourth and two i remember Earhart was on my right side i i don't remember being nervous at all i just went through my progression and, and just threw a nice little slant and uh you know i do remember my last throw i was careful with the wells ran an arrow route and i put it in the dirt i was I was like, I don't, I don't want to make this critical error at a critical time. I wish I would have had that one back. But it's a great memory when Andy hit that field goal, and then we just kind of held on. And 
I thought that was my last game playing in my life. I really did. I thought it was it. Did you really? Was it. Thought, yeah, and I thought I'd be fine. I thought that that would be fine. I had my family, my sister, my brother. And I thought this this could this could work out, but if it don't, boy, what a way to go out. So well, Dave, you went on to be the MVP of the Grey Cup. You've won what five Grey Cups, uh, both both playing and coaching. You played in the National Football League. Uh, you went on to coach. Uh, it's been a crazy great career. You've won you won two state high school championships in Montana. Well, it was, let me, it was CM Russell, correct? Oh yeah. Jack Johnson, man. That's the, yeah. that's the factory. Yeah. I remember those days. Uh, you, and you come up, I will tell you, Dave, the first time I heard your name, my roommate for five years at the university of Montana, our fullback, Joe Klusiewicz was coaching on the defensive side of the ball, right? And at the University of Montana when you were a freshman. And we were talking on the telephone. And he said, Marty, we've got this quarterback. He's about five foot ten, five foot eleven. And he can really, really play. He thought that you should have been starting from day one of your freshman year. And of course, you started very shortly thereafter. And congratulations on that 1995 national championship. One question I have for you. Your preparation individually for the national championship game, was it any different than any other game? You mentioned you were beat up a little bit, so I, I suspect you were trying to take care of your body and be at your best physically. But the mental preparation, was there any difference uh, for a national championship game? Uh, not for me, you know, I don't know. I want to throw this out there that Marty brought me into Detroit, guys. So we, I did play for Marty for the Detroit Lions for two weeks. <laughs> Guess what? It was it was much appreciated, Marty, by the way. I appreciate you doing that. And even though uh, I guess we were both on our way out after that year. But uh, no, preparation-wise. You went back to Canada. I did. I I yeah. didn't think I was going to get a look in the NFL, which was obvious at that point. I appreciate, but I, I wasn't, I'm not even sure I was good enough, but it was, I would rather play than just hang out. So to me, it was worth it. And I hope people realize Canadian football is good football. I hope anybody yeah. wants to come up, come on up. You'll, uh, you'll realize how good it is. But preparation wise, first off, I'll tell you right now, the game has changed so much um, with technology, with what coaches can do for players what you can see, what you can find, um, how well game plans are put together. I mean, it's amazing what players can get these days. doesn't always mean, though, it's easier. In fact, it's harder. But, I mean, we had, like, two protections. We had, like, a red and a blue. You're the old line, you're sliding right. And for red and blue, you're sliding left, six-man, five-man a little bit. We never played with seven-man pro much. So, I, I, don't, I wasn't the guy that was necessarily uh, – I knew what I was doing, and I definitely studied some film, but um, I, I'm not going to say I was the guy like a Tom Brady or, or Peyton Manning. Let's go with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning seemed to have everything figured out. I just was kind of one of those guys that knew my stuff, and I figured out the first quarter. And it's weird to say that, but that's how I played too because sometimes you're confused, but I just trust what you see, know where your progressions go, and then uh, – and then just don't be afraid to make a mistake. But I didn't change at all. I mean, I had a guy named Phil Ryan there. He's passed away. He was with the Grizz. You know, he was taking care of my shoulder. We were, <laughs> we were throwing some things called DMSO in there. It was craziness back in our generation. And I, I didn't think I was feeling that good. In fact, I was a little nervous because I didn't have that same pop. I don't know if Marty ever played where you just didn't feel like your arm had that same pop. And you get a little, you get a concern. That's your moneymaker. Um, but I felt like uh, I thought we were going to win. Uh, we were playing a great team, but I thought we were going to win. Not that many other people did. And we went in pretty damn confident. And uh, we had just come off a 70 to 14 shellacking and our defense was playing tremendous. And and uh, preparation wise, well, I knew kind of what to expect, but it was different, man. I just figured I could figure it out and the guys could. And, and for me, it was more about showing confidence in our guys, knowing that when we walked on that field, we were there to win. And, we were. That's what it. That's what it was about. Hey, Dave. So the Grizz are really heavy underdogs. Almost two touchdown underdog, right? 
what has to happen? You followed the Grizz just a little bit. What has to happen for the Grizz to overcome this 11, 12, 13 point underdog type of situation and actually beat South Dakota State, which is on, Dave, they're on a 26-game, I believe, win streak. They're the defending national champions. They've blown many people out. What has to occur in this game for the Grizz to win the national championship? Well, uh, they have to come in with the right mindset. And uh, listen, I understand. I got a South Dakota State guy on my team up here, uh, played there last year, Michael Griffiths. And he, uh, him and I have been chatting a little bit. I'm not saying the best team always wins. Uh, I hope the Grizz are the best team, but I'm not saying the best team wins in football. Uh, but I will say that you got to get yourself ready to go and, and don't play scared. And I coaches as well. Coaches can't coach that way. You play to, to make the play and make sure every bullet in your holster has been shot. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, oh, lay it all on the line. Well, they're going to do that, but you got to do it in the right fashion. I think penalties and trying too hard are some big time problems early on in game. And, and I do think the Grizz need to make some plays early in this game. I think they need to show people we're here to play and take a lead would be outstanding, but also um, they can't get behind early. I just don't think that's a formula that's going to work. Uh, but I do think when you're the favorite and the underdog is ahead or in the game late, uh, the pressure switches. It goes back on the favorite. And uh, I hope the Grizz can can find a way to either have the lead or be in the game come that fourth quarter, because I do think that's what these two teams deserve. But uh, no magic like formula for me, except that don't play scared. Don't try to do anything more. I tell my guys, honestly, it's it's a football game. Um, I've heard people say this in the NFL, like, why? Well, how'd you play so well? Well, I've been playing this since I'm four. Well, guess what? All these guys have been doing that. So uh, show up, um, play aggressive, though. Play to make plays. Don't play scared. And 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 then support your teammates, make good decisions, take care of that football, and see where it goes. Dave, you know the Grizz season, their defense has been fantastic all year long, from game one to the last ball game, with a, a very few exceptions. You know, you know, and and the the two guys that 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 are big on the defense is the defensive coordinator Ronnie Bradford, who played and coached in the NFL, uh, Dave. And then Timmy Houck, Bobby's brother, is a defensive analyst. So between those two, it's sort of like the Grizz are rarely ever out of position, and they are really good tacklers. So that might keep them in this ball game. And then, Dave, their offense, they sputtered at the start, and they had not selected a true starting quarterback I always thought that that position, it's not, it's not really the guy, but it's that position is sort of thrust in to the leadership role just because of the position, right? And then finally, it was after that NAU game where they named their starting quarterback. And I'm not against playing two quarterbacks. I've done that before. But one is the man. And when, when Clifton McDowell was named the starting quarterback, first of all, Dave, he's a lot like you in that he's undefeated as a starting quarterback for the Grizz. This guy knows how to win games. And, and, but he took the bull by the horns and sort of run with, ran with it, and the Grizz offense got better every week, and that defense has been there the whole year. And Brett Peace, the offensive coordinator, who, Dave, I know you know, has done a brilliant job, brilliant job once they named Clifton McDowell as the starting quarterback. Now, what do you think about uh, Bobby? He didn't name the starting quarterback. It worked out beautifully. They've only dropped one game. But are you, do you tend to name a starting quarterback? If you don't know who your quarterback is, you're in trouble. Or uh, have you been through situations where there's been a competition even into the season? Well, I mean, 93, it was a competition. Myself, a guy named Burt Wilberger and uh, Coach Reed came up to us. I, I'd had mono that that uh, spring, and, you know, I'm not very big anyway, but I went down to like 153, and I was uh, – I thought I had a good shot at it, but I didn't have a very good spring. So Coach Reed said we're going to play both. He uh, had a pretty good game against South Dakota State. We won 52-48, and the next week get benched uh, going to Oregon. And uh, – and then came in that game and played well. But 
Yeah, I get it. I mean, if you're not sure, you usually can get away with a loss or two um, and still get in. Uh, but I do think you're right, Marty. You have to have the man. And um, for Clifton, to be straight up, you know, I don't know all his story, but I think he was like a raging Cajun there back there. And then he went to like Central Arkansas or something weird. And I think he just fits. I think he fits with Coach Pease and, and what he's trying to do. He's he's. It seems like he's playing confident, but he's also versatile. I don't think you play as well in today's game if you don't have a guy that can make off schedule or running running plays, you know, running plays or maybe, like you said, corner, design quarterback runs, draws, that sort of stuff. But off schedule plays where it's not drawn up perfectly and the quarterback can find a way to, to make that happen. I think <laughs> – I do think I was good at that. I think uh, I improvised. And uh, I think my – sometimes those plays were, were one of the things that – uh, some of my best plays, but defensively, I'm I'm really pretty pretty excited for Coach Halk uh, to have his brother there, Tim, because I feel like sometimes my story, uh, Tim and myself have a little bit more of the similarities than my brother Craig, who's also a head coach here in the CFL and coaching the NFL, probably is the better coach. Same with Bobby, I think Timmy would would agree with that. But it's nice to you know those brothers they working together and having those experience. What I think the defense that I've seen that's different is their ball hawks. Um, I'm trying to remember the kid, Gradney or something from Billings, like the kid just just finds the football. You know, and when they get their chances on sacks, they make the play. Their linebackers are very fast and versatile. And I knew Levi's story a little bit when his mom passed. Don't know him personally, but what a great person. But um, when I saw Braxton Hill coming in and doing what he's been doing, and I feel like defenses do win championships, and then offenses, I think, have to make sure that when it's your time, you shine and. They got a good mix. You know, I don't think this game's going to get out of control. I, 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 I wasn't surprised with the NDSU score of 16-16. I think this is going to be higher scoring. I think this will be in the upper 20s. But I do think uh, somewhere, and if it, Grizz can keep them 30 points or less, I really think they got a great chance. So um, as far as the quarterback-wise, it's got to be your best player. You can't win in football if your quarterback don't play well. It's not It's not the Baltimore Ravens, Marty, with Trent Dilfer. It's not happening. The quarterback well, once in a blue well. moon. It happens, right, where you have a quarterback that's not sort of in the top ten, right, and you win a Joe Flacco with the with Baltimore, right, and and, and Dilfer. Well, typically when that happens, two things: you have a great defense, the best defense in the NFL, or one of the best, and your quarterback Dave into the playoffs and through the Super Bowl plays like a top five or ten quarterback. He gets hot. I know Flacco, when I was coaching Joe, his teammates just, you could you could hear it. Let's get Joe to the playoffs, and then we'll see what happens. You know, guys, some guys are just gamers once the big games happen, and Joe was kind of like that. Uh, I know Trent threw, uh, I think, three touchdowns in the Super Bowl. You know, you have to almost pass the ball. You know, he, he might have thrown a couple picks, too, but then That's the defense just yeah. puts him down. I was a chance in Seattle, one of my favorite people. And, uh, yeah, like Nick Foles for Philly. Like, trust me, Nick Foles is not a good quarterback. But guess what? He got hot and he played excellent. And he out, you know, you, that's what I mean. The best team don't always win either. Like, get hot and make plays and have confidence. Uh, and uh, we will see. We will see. I don't know if South Dakota State guys, I see a Gronkowski on their roster. I'm sure he's related for some reason. But it seems like they've had a few of those guys run through there. So it'll be a tough matchup. Dave, now, uh, you, you, oh, go ahead, Marty. <laughs> Dave, Dave, this three-week deal in between the, the the semifinals and the championship, what do you think about that? I've sort of thought a little bit about it. Does it give the Grizz an advantage? I, I think it might because I think the Grizz coaching staff is brilliant, right? Or does it give South Dakota State it, it, an advantage? It gives both teams an advantage to become healthy, I think. Does one team get stale? Uh, do, do you practice differently just to stay sharp? When do you put that game plan in? You know, all those things. Any thoughts on this three-week separation between the semifinal and the championship game, Dave? Well, we didn't have that. We were straight in. Uh, we do have some breaks in in Canada sometimes. You get a couple weeks. I think you're right on, Marty. I think coaching-wise, you love the break because I think you're going to put your best stuff in. I think you're going to feel prepared, and I don't think you're going to feel rushed. And I think you're going to you're going to know what you want to run against them. 
uh, both ways. And then uh, player wise, I don't know. I think maybe I would rather play weekly. I don't really love a bye week. Uh, as a quarterback, I want to be in rhythm. I want to be in timing. Uh, so for as a player, I really wouldn't, if I was healthy, I'd rather just play the next week, but coaches for sure. You like that extra time. I'm not sure it gives anyone an advantage. Uh, we'll see. Um, you know, even like you said, playing on a neutral field now, uh, I would love to see if it was played in, in Washington Grizz, but, uh, you know, we would have had to gone on the road anyway, cause they're the number one seed. So let's put it, let's put it out there. I know, I know the Grizz are going to travel well, and uh, we got a big contingent going down. I know from great falls. I mean, a good buddy of mine, John Knutson, who played at Colorado, he lives in Frisco. He's recruiting guys, let people stay with him. I'm not going to be there, which sucks. Uh, I'm going to be in Nashville at the AFCA, and uh, I'm going to be watching. But uh, excited for this game. And I think, honestly, I think like a 13-point under, that seems a bit much. But, hey, uh, they are the reigning champs, and they've been uh, they've been putting it on people. So uh, hopefully we get, get right in the mix and see what happens. Hey, Dave. Uh, quick update on your family. Tell us where, where they're at. I'm jealous of you because you're still running and gunning. All my kids are grown. What's going on with the family? Well, I mean, my daughter's a freshman in college. She's in nursing up here at Calgary. My son's a junior. He's, he, he broke his arm in the first game of football this year. He's playing a little, uh, uh, quarterback as well as some other positions too. Uh, and then uh, the wife here, she retired after COVID. Uh, she's a pharmacist from the University of Montana, so that was nice. And then I'm trying to keep my job. Um, you know, I saw a little quick blast here on on Junior Berg, and he's a guy I'm very interested in. I'd, I'd like to meet the man. I think he's a, a great fit for Canada. And I'll tell you, I need a Grizz on my team. Uh, so <laughs> I, I hope he wants to keep playing. That's the thing. Uh, uh, sometimes, you know, you never know. But uh, – Things are fine up here. You know, I didn't have my best year. It's tough to lose. I'm not a good loser. I don't want to be a good loser. Um, uh, so I'm actually really looking forward to this season and uh, enjoy, just like you said, I enjoy being around my my kids, my son. I'm coaching his basketball team. Um, that's a bad thing and a good thing. It's bad because there should be better coaches out there, than me, but it's fun that, that I get to be there. I'm not sure he loves having me on the bench, but uh, tough luck tough luck i'm gonna be there so it's all good <laughs> Dave, I, awesome, I got one Dave. to, to fire yep. your way um you know we, we've certainly mentioned junior bergen when we were talking about the defense you, you mentioned braxton hill levi janicaro you know guys like Ryder meyer those are all montana guys um you yourself from cmr you know a scrappy underdog played for montana uh became a legend um what do you make of this year's group of, of Montana uh, natives on the Grizz roster? And, and how important is that to the health of the program at the University oh, of Montana? Yeah, I think it's excellent. I mean, juniors, Billings as well, right? So, um, you know, it's funny because when I got there, uh, Great Falls previous to a few years, I'm going to say mid-80s, uh, was a cat city. They all went to the Bobcats. I mean, the older Caliphate and everyone went to the Cats. And then kind of mid-80s, uh, there was this little turn. Don Reed came in. Um, you know, Joe Califad went to the Grizz and all of a sudden all these Mont Great Falls kids started going to the Grizz and uh, we felt like we kind of turned the tides. Uh, and I know the, the powerhouse of, of, of football right now is Glacier, Bozeman, of course, Missoula, uh, Sentinel, I think. And I would put probably Dillon's West in there. So Great Falls is kind of uh, maybe needs to upgrade a bit, but I, I do feel like there's still a ton of great football players from Montana. And like I say, you find them from Anaconda. You can find them from lots of places. Um, I do think for us, we needed some speed, some skill, and we we felt like we had to go elsewhere to get that. But when you talk about what it means to be a Grizz or part of the program or be from Montana and a guy that won't quit um, and won't transfer, um, it's going to stay with the group because that's where they want to be. Uh, that's a uh, born and bred Montana man. And that's, uh, those are the guys I, I read juniors quotes. I hope he stays, uh, you know, and all those type of things, but you can just, you can kind of sense first off, uh, this team is built together. They're not really like I'm from Montana. So we're going to hang out. One of the best receivers from Canada, walk on from Vancouver, Keelan. So, uh, I've, I've been following Keelan, um, He'll be a Canadian up here playing for sure. Uh, so you got to have that mix, but it is nice to have those homegrown guys that mm -hmm. 
I mean, they'll give anything just to, just to be part of that team. I love it. Hey, Dave, you met, you mentioned Junior Bergen a couple of times. You know, when I was announcing the games early in the year, I'm, I, I must have said it uh, every game. And so opposing coaches must not listen to the television <laughs> cast. You know what I mean? Because don't punt or kick the ball to Bergen. Don't do it. Even if you have to lose a little field position by directional punting, uh, and then please d cover him in the slot, double him if needed. Now, if you blitz, you take the risk on one on one. But okay, last week he returns a punt for a touchdown, and he catches a touchdown out of the slot in the red zone. It just it 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 it, it it's crazy. The college guys don't take into account the individual specific matchups and having a plan for him. I'll tell you what, Dave. All the opposing coaches, I would talk to them Thursday when they come in. All right, what's your plan for Bergen? You know what their mindset was? Well, we'll we're better than those other five teams where he scored on them, you know? And, and uh, well, we're better than that. And, and that's a big mistake to make because Junior Bergen is a special, special guy. He wins games for you uh, in the return game and, and in the slot at, at the receiver spot. So I think that was big mistakes made by some of the opposing coaches coming in. And you mentioned also, Dave, this home field advantage is huge. And I think people underestimate that, opposing coaches. Because I would ask, Dave, what are you doing with the noise? Do you have a plan for it? Well, yeah, we're going to do – we're going to – they have no idea. And then five false starts later, they walk out of the stadium with a loss. And they, they had no plan for it. So I think uh, uh, that home field advantage, thank you, Denny Washington and the family for building that thing. Dave, when did that get built? Uh, probably five years before you started playing yeah. somewhere in there? It got built before me. Uh, I, I'm i going to say that uh, we helped maybe build the end zones. I, I would <laughs> like to think we were part of that. A um, couple things what you were saying right there, very interesting, the noise, you know, uh, I watched us play Eastern a couple of years ago and I'm head the head coach of Eastern is a guy I know pretty well too. And what Bobby was doing when you get into short yards, you know, nobody goes under center that much and he would shift his line right for, and I swear every time the offensive line would jump in front of fourth and one, now it's fourth and six Eastern's punting and the Grizz whooped him. And I do think that's a huge, a huge advantage. And I don't think it's talked about. The other thing is I, you know, I'm going to always have, my man, Bobby Houck's back. That's a great special teams coach. Um, he's won multiple games because of special teams. Uh, two returns week four, uh, obviously a return last week there. Uh, you know, when you're a head coach, you want to kind of delve in all these things. And you know, Marty, but it's really you should do what you're good at. And Bobby's always been one of the best, if not the best, special teams guy. I know he probably has help, but I want to give him his due. He, he he schemes it up. He does a great job. I know he wasn't in love with trying to set up that return late uh, last week when he gave, gave up the fake, but uh, the guy knows how to coach. And, 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 and the fans of Montana, we were lucky. See, we were up. I think we were a six seed going in and the teams in front of us where we were going to have to go on the road, got upset. And we ended up having three home games. There's a similar path right here. The Grizz were number two, so they got that, but, it's pretty much the path of uh, that we know we need to be on to get in front of those fans. And I wasn't there at the last game, but I was told uh, atmosphere like no other. Amazing, cold, loud, uh, but just people just all locked in and uh, it made a huge difference. So uh, hopefully they travel well and we can uh, have some some people yelling and screaming uh, and getting after South Dakota State as well. Dave, Bobby and your brother are very similar, great special teams coaches. And that can take a team really, really far if you've got even a little advantage on special teams throughout the game. Those, those plays are so important. Dave Dickinson, it was great to see you again. Uh, I remember the 1995 National Championship game because I was watching it on TV pregame of one of our games when I was in Green Bay, you know, the, the old rule was uh, TVs could stay on until you came back from pregame. So uh, we were watching you then, lighting it up. And uh, congratulations on that. You're the man to speak to when you talk about Grizzlies 
and national championships. So thank you for being on. Tom, thank you for hosting. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Marty. We'll close with, do you guys have any score predictions? How do you see the game playing out? <laughs> well, my prediction is always, Dave, it's always 40 to nothing Grizz, and it never changes. So you're never right. That's, uh, I, that's I won great once this year, Northern Colorado, and then and then I was very very close, very close in, in the Grizz Cat game. Well, you're right, thirty-seven-seven, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm, I need them to keep it under thirty. I need to keep them under thirty. I think that's the way they got to win. They got to have two big plays, and they got to win the turnover battle. Uh, so I do think it's going to be in that upper 20s. I'll take the Grizz as well with my heart, and uh, I'll be I'll be yelling at the screen, making sure it happens. Let's go, let's go, let's go 28-24 and find a way, Grizz, find a way. 28-24, you heard it. In Frisco, Texas, in 12 days' time, the FCS National Championships. Marty, Dave, thank you guys to you both. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we're uh, we're chatting about a, a championship win in a couple weeks' time. So Go, Grizz! <laughs> yeah, no doubt. All right. Well, thanks, Slim Kimmel, behind the scenes there, making sure this runs.